So in the previous video, uh, we got cut off here right at the end of our computation of DWDU. The only thing that we were missing uh, was the 3u minus 3u squared minus 2v and then times 6u. And now everything is in terms of our underlying independent variables. So just like the case where we had t as our underlying variable for z, here we have two independent variables, both that ultimately affect the value of w. So it's okay for dw, du to have u and v in it because those are at the bottom of our chain. We don't want to mix in variables higher up in the chain because those can always be expressed in terms of u and v. So to compute the next one, in order to get dw, dv, what we need to do is follow the same chain of events, but now we need to get there by saying, well, how is w affected by v? Well, w is affected by v through x and then x through v. w is affected by v through y and then y through v as well. So that tells us exactly what to multiply together. To get dw, dv, we need to take, as we can see here, dw dx times dx dv. And it should always be the case that these units work out. So you see here that we end up with dw dv. This is, once again, the x effect, how x affects w plus how y affects w. So we have dw dy. That's following the second chain here. And then times dy dv will give us dw dv. Except, once again, this is the effect due to y. So we have these two partial derivatives, those we already knew. We, we now do need to compute dx dv. But recall that x does not directly depend on v x is, is a function of u. So if you take the derivative of 4u plus 0v with respect to v, remember that 4u is a constant. We're holding u constant here. So the derivative of 4u with respect to v is 0. And then the derivative of y with respect to v is going to be dy dv. The derivative of 3u squared is 0 because that's u is constant. The derivative of negative 2v is minus 2. So uh, we can save ourselves a little bit of work here because we know that this whole term is going to be 0 since uh, dw dx is not 0 but dx dv is 0 so when you multiply those together you are going to get 0. And now we just need to account for the second term. So dw dy, we know that from above. dw dy is x squared e to the y. So x squared times e to the y, and then multiplied by dy dv, which we just found out is negative 2. So lastly, I just want to get everything in terms of u and v, since those are the underlying variables here. So x, recall, is equal to, um, let's go back up here, x is equal to 4u. So we're going to replace x squared with 4u squared e to the y, recall that y is 3u squared minus 2v, and all of that multiplied by negative 2. So I'll just stick my negative 2 out front over here. And there's our final answer for dw dv. And here was our final answer for dw du. DW, DU. Let's try that one more time. DU. And this was our final answer for DW, DU. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at an application where we might see this. Um, here we have, in this next example, we're told that the capacity C of a communication channel, such as a telephone line to carry information, depends on the ratio of the signal strength to the noise for some positive constant k. So we're going to need to acknowledge that k is going to be a positive constant. Uh, so when you think about sig the signal strength, um, the high with really high signal strength, you're going to get a lot of capacity um, in that communication channel. But if as that noise gets bigger, we see that the noise will 
uh, cause this ratio to get smaller and so our capacity will get smaller as well. We're going to change this question just a little bit. Instead of looking at this after one second, we'll look at this at zero seconds. It's just going to make the computation a little bit simpler. You're going to see that this requires quite a bit of computation. But we see that C depends on two variables. It depends on S and it depends on N. Those are our two inputs. K is some positive constant, so it's not a variable. And we know that S and N both depend upon T. So in order to calculate DC DT, we're going to need to follow the chain down once again. And for one, we're going to have DC DS. And then we'll have DS DT. So we're back to the Calc 1 notation here because S only depends on one input and n only depends on one input, but c depends on two inputs. So here we'll have dc dn, and then here we'll have dn dt. So to calculate this, we see that we're going to need to take, to get dc dt, we're going to multiply, going down the chain, dc ds by ds dt. So we'll have dc ds times ds dt plus we're going to need to get the contribution of capacity due to n and that's going to be dc dn times dn dt so we'll have dc dn times dn dt so we need to compute these partials and in order to do so this can get a little bit messy, so we're going to go ahead and jump over to Wolfram Alpha. I'll show you how you can compute these four partials using Wolfram. So let's go ahead and switch over to that. So to do this in Wolfram Alpha, first of all, here's our function. This is, uh, this is C right here. And uh, so C is K times LN 1 plus S over N. And I need to specify which partial I want. So because I want DDS, I want the derivative with respect to S first. Um, I just type DDDS and here is the output. So it's telling me that the partial of C with respect to S is K over N plus S. So we can come back here and we can write down DCDS is equal to k over n plus s and to get dc dn I'm going to do the same thing I would just go back to Wolfram Alpha and replace s with n and we come up with negative ks over n squared plus ns now, because we specified in Wolfram Alpha that we're taking the derivative with respect to capital N, it treats everything else as a constant. So we don't have to worry about specifying that to Wolfram Alpha. To get ds dt, I am going to, uh, again, we could do this in Wolfram Alpha. We would just have to type in d slash dt of 4 plus cosine parenthesis 4 pi t. And when we do that, we come up with negative 4 pi sine of 4 pi t. To get dc dt similarly, we would come up with 2 pi cosine of 2 pi t. And now we can put these pieces together. So dc dt will be the product of these two guys here. So k over n plus s times negative 4 pi sine of 4 pi t plus now we have dc dn which is negative k s over n squared plus n s times 2 pi cosine of 2 pi t now what we want to know is it is what is dc dt zero seconds after transmission is the capacity increasing or decreasing at that instant. So first of all, I need uh, everything that depends on time. I'm not going to go ahead and plug in 4 plus cosine 4 pi t for s here. It's just going to be a really long, messy thing. But once I would replace n and s with the, their respective two functions, this one and this one, 
I would then substitute in zero and evaluate. So really what I need is just to know what n of zero is and what s of zero is. So if I plug in zero for t here, I'll get two plus sine of zero, which is two. Here I'll plug in four plus cosine of zero, four, which is four plus one, gives me five. And then I'm also going to have to evaluate sine of four pi t when pi, uh, when t is zero. And four pi zero is zero, sine of zero is zero. Cosine, I'll need cosine of two pi times zero. And that's going to come out to be one. This just makes it easier uh, to plug everything in. So now I'm going to plug everything in to dc dt. I get that it's going to be k over two plus five, which is seven, times negative four pi sine four pi t is zero. So this whole whole term here is going to be zero plus negative k s, s is two, uh, sorry, s is five. And that's over n squared plus n s. So if I square n, I get four, n times s is 10, four plus 10 is 14. 2 pi times cosine of 2 pi times 0, which is 1. And I'll simplify that a little bit. I get, um, if I multiply 5 times 2 pi, I get 10 pi. So I'll have negative 10 pi k over 14. And that's what dc dt comes out to be. And the question is, what's happening to the capacity at that instant based on the givens. So uh, I, I don't know what k is. k was not given to me, but I know that k is greater than zero. So I could say since k is positive, well, I'll have a negative times a positive times a positive divided by a positive is going to be a negative number. So that means dc dt is less than zero. So what I can say is the capacity is decreasing at time t equals zero. That's really all I can say. I don't know by how much. If I knew the value of k, I could determine that, but that's going to vary from line to line, from different um, type of infrastructure to different type of infrastructure. So all I can really say at this moment is that the capacity is decreasing at t equals zero. So we'll stop there. We'll take a look at one more example in the next video where we'll look at uh, a more of a related rates looking problem.